Morning guys, it's Brent with Likens Motorsports. These are uh, some more parts for our 527 camera build for, for Mr. Dennis. And um, I just ordered the pistons the other day uh, from Molly. And in all honesty, it'll probably take a couple months for those to crank those out. And they're on a very long uh, lead time right now, but the quality is, is worth the wait. What I can do just to kind of get ahead of, ahead of the airplane a little bit is to um, go ahead and check our rod bearing clearances. So on this particular build, um, I really don't know how much horsepower this is going to make. Um, I'm thinking like, I don't know, 750, 800, something like that. I, I don't really have a lot of camera experience. So um, the cam is just a little bit on the mild side for... Uh, for that size engine and um, it's got a heavy car to push around so we don't want to get too carried away and he wanted it to be a street uh, street based engine so um, just not for sure how much horsepower to make uh, I use a lot of scat rods and um, they're light and I like them up to a certain point but when you need a heavy hitter I like these Molnar rods and um, they're also very light. Come with ARP 2000 bolts, and uh, these will hold a lot of horsey power. So we're gonna get our rod bearing clearances checked this morning. And we'll see what's up with, uh, we'll show you the crankshaft here in a second, and uh, we'll see if I got the right bearings or not. I've got a box of Calico coated, big block Chevrolet, narrowed uh, extra clearance rod bearings. I use I use coated bearings and everything. I think it's an added uh, insurance and um, there's there's really no con to, to that. So to me, it's worth the extra expense. Um, the reason I'm a little, I'm not, wouldn't say concerned, but um, apprehensive about whether these will be the right bearings or not uh, is because we are using an RPM crankshaft. Um, you don't see many of these anymore. So before COVID, um, RPM made a whole lot of crankshafts. You could get a 398 stroke with a uh, big block Chevrolet rod journal. You get a four and an eighth, you get a four and a quarter. This is a four three seven five stroke, and um, Mr. Dennis found this, and I'm like, "Hey, you need to snag that. Um, if anything, just to keep it. But uh, if you use it in combination with your four and three eighths bore on your pond block for this single over a cam build, that'll net about five hundred and twenty seven cubic inches. So." Four and three eight stroke will fit inside a wedge head to block. Um, you just need to watch cam to uh, rod clearances on a, on a couple towards the back of the motor. Since there's no cam in the middle of the block on a camera engine, we're, we're good to go. And um, you can actually go a whole lot longer stroke on the camera builds, but it uh, increases the price of the engine considerably because you're dealing with custom billet cranks and, and that sort of thing. So this thing's brand new. Um, I was just giving it a once over and here's, I found the hole was not to the center of the throw. I did measure the thickness of the material over here. It's about 200 thousandths. Um, this one is just a little bit off. The other two, you have to be looking from this way to, to look at it, but as opposed to the scat, they're all, they're all on center. Again, I don't think it'll hurt anything, but it's just something that it, my eyeball picked up. This is Mr. Cody's scat steel crank, and you can see the difference in the, the way the material looks. This is steel. This is a steel as well. It's got a different, uh, 
I heard these were nitrided. I don't know. But they've always had that bluish look to them. They always come wrapped in uh, in this oiling paper. Uh, the journals, so that was a, a long way to get to this point right here. The journals are usually a little bit oversized on on the RPM crank. So I'm going to measure a couple right now in front of you so you can see the difference. We'll measure this scat, and then we'll measure this RPM to see the difference. All right, we've got our uh, Mitotoyo uh, mic checked against our standard do that every time I go to check bearing clearances. Two one nine eight six. Moving down. Two one nine eight five with a five. Two one nine eight six, and I'm on the four eight throw. Two one nine eight six. This is uh, scat is pretty high quality on on their journals and everything on, as far as tolerances go, and um, I usually don't have any problems with scat. So let's uh, hop on over to our RPM crank. All right, same deal here. That's how much bigger the journals are. So we were uh, two, what did we say? Two, one, nine, eight, six was the other. So there's almost a thousandth difference in the raw journal diameters. I'm gonna move on down. I know you probably can't see it, but Two one nine nine five. Two one nine nine four with a five. Two one nine nine six. So what I can do, uh, these are X bearings. I picked those out of, off the shelf just because I kind of had a feeling we'd be running into this. And uh, the coating takes up a little bit of clearance and the difference in that rod journal is really gonna hurt us. So I'm gonna check just one rod with the X bearing and see what our clearances are. My gut tells me I haven't messed with these in in quite a quite a while way before covid but uh i think we'll probably have to have this crank touch ground um and i'll measure the mains too to make sure they're in spec but i always had to have these ground and um they you could just not get a bearing to fit so i'll put uh, a set of bearings in a rod and we'll check the clearance all right so here's our uh washed rod and washed bearing you gotta make sure that you get um the right bearing half in the rod i don't know if you can see this but it says upper hold on let me shine some light on it there is an upper and then there's a lower you have to get those in the correct orientation so the upper goes in this part, lower goes in the rod cap. And then put your bolts in and torque it up. These torque at uh, 30 pound feet plus 60 degrees. All right, I've got my mic set to my 1.5 rod journal, I'm going to zero that. So when you do that, 
you're wanting to make this distance from, from here to here short as possible. If I zero it here, it's not gonna be right. If I zero there, it's not gonna be right, nor is it gonna be right if I tilt it this way. So if you look, look at the scale here, I'm moving it to find the shortest part and then I'm zeroing it, so it should always come back to zero. So once you have it zeroed in both directions, like that, you can lock it down, and then we can check our clearance. So since our mic is set to the raw journal, whatever I see here is gonna be the difference in our bearing clearance. So if you can see this, it says two thousandths and about three tenths. So what's a rule of thumb on bearing clearances? So um, we usually aim for one thousandth of clearance per inch of rod journal. So a big block Chevrolet rod journal is two two hundred. So if we did a thousandth of clearance for that, we'd be at um, zero zero two 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 thousandths two tenths. Um, we had a little bit more than that, I think, from the angle that I was looking at um, while my daughter was filming. But um, I'd be I'd be okay with that. What I would probably do is just have uh, when it goes to the balance shop, the crank, just have them polish a, a tenth or two off. Um, for some reason, my gut kind of feels just a little bit better if I'm closer to two and a half thousandths on this with the amount of horsepower and everything that we're going to be making. Um, do I think it would survive at two, 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 three? Of course. Um, but uh, just, I don't know. You get those gut feelings sometimes. But I was for sure that we were not gonna have enough clearance at all, and I was gonna have to send this out to be ground. And I may measure the mains um, here in a second just to double check that, but um, in the past, I've had to have these cranks touch ground and, and everything else. But um, I think we're good to go, to go ahead and wash the rest of our rods and check our other bearing clearances. All right, so I'm in the midst of checking bearing clearances, and um, here's what I've been getting so far, two, three, two, one, two, one. Um, like I said, those will be fine. We can have a couple thou polished off the journals, and, and the journals are gonna need to be polished anyway because they've been sitting, and um, they just don't look good. It's not, uh, it's not rust or anything, it's just a stain, and uh, those will need to be polished off. But what I did was I went through, you can notice I put weights on all the rods. And here's the little ends, here's the big ends, and I just averaged those up to get a number. Instead of, you'll see a lot of guys just grind the poop out of the, out of the rod, usually about right here and then on the little end to get everything to spec. I found it's much cleaner and easier um, to just average everything and then pair um, rods together so for instance um, so my average is 229.3 and 509.6 what I did was um, so for this is number two rod so we'll do 508.3 this is number six rod it's 510.5 if I average those, 509.4, we're just two, gram, uh, two tenths of a gram off from our average. Um, and then 228.8, 229.2, that's going to be uh, right in there too. So to me, that's cleaner and easier and it looks better and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to grind everything. So I'm going to continue on and as you see, I just mark them out when I use them. And um, now there may, it may get to a point here in a minute where, um, you know, we're gonna be outside of our average by a lot. I don't know, could be, but um, like I'll 
pair this 513 and this 520 or this 507 together, I think that'll still work. And then the remaining ones are, are right in there, maybe a little bit light, but um, if in the event that we were just way outside of, of on the heavy side of our average, you know, we can always grind a little bit, but I, I like to do it this way if I can. All right, we got seven rods done. I got one left. For some reason I had a box of rod bearings that was missing a pair. I guess I used it um, at some point in time, but I'll have to order some more bearings. Um, let's mic the mains real quick and see what we got for those. All right, so on our scat, we got 7483 on our number one main. On our RPM crank, we got 7485, so just two ten thousandths of an inch um, bigger on the mains. Um, I may not have to do anything to this. This will be awesome. So we'll have to wait till the block is machined and, and check our bearing clearances, but I think we're going to be in good shape. All right, so we're going to wrap up this video. Uh, that's just another step in the process and um, trying to find better and more accurate ways of doing things at each and every time. But uh, got one more rod bearing to check when, when that comes in and we'll have this part knocked out, ready to go. So the heads are assembled, half of our um, bearing clearances are checked and we're, uh, we're on a steady progress rate. Um, that'll be it. Hope you guys are having a good week. Two videos in a row regarding this camera this weekend. Hope that helps. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys are building cameras out there, but um, if you're like me, uh, you just like to see it. <laughs> you don't even have to do it. You just like to see it because the engines are so rare and so awesome. Uh, hope you guys are having a good week. I will talk to you soon, and I'll see you later.